number of COVID-19 cases continues to rise globally and right here in Guyana. Therefore, we encourage everyone to practice social distancing. Wear a mask if you have to leave your homes and wash your hands thoroughly and frequently as we strive to stop the spread of the virus. Welcome to InfoHub for Thursday, July 23. Thank you for joining us. APNU AFC executive member Aubrey Norton said the most recent ruling of the High Court may have opened an avenue to legitimize the attempt at electoral fraud by the opposition PPP. Here are the details. The High Court on Monday ruled that the Ghana Elections Commission should move ahead and use the tabulated numbers from the national vote recount to determine the winner of the March 2 elections. Speaking with CCN TV6 Fazir Mohammed Tuesday, Norton said the contention over that ruling is that if the court found the recount to be legal, then the process could not be looked at in part, since both His Excellency President David Granger and Opposition Leader Mark Jaglio agreed to a four-stage process aimed at determining the credibility of the elections. What in essence I think the, the, the Chief Justice and the court did was to legitimize electoral fraud because they had before them, they had before them all the data, the observation reports that came from the recount process that you are saying is legal. And then suddenly you can use part of it, but obfuscate the rest. Let the rest be hidden. Let there be like X in algebra and you got to work it out. To me, that is unacceptable. And it is that element of the ruling we have problems with. With the ruling of the High Court, Jones has now moved to the Court of Appeal for recourse. Norton said the appeal is asking the judges to look at the recount order in its entirety and arrive at a more logical conclusion that will eschew a government based on electoral fraud. The PPP has never disowned the electoral fraud. All they are doing is saying that it should go by way of election petition. And I'm saying this is different because we've been into the box. We know what is in the box. And therefore, to tell us about election petition is to say legitimize the fraud and then let's look at it after. That's unacceptable to any rational thinking person. Dispelling all narratives that the coalition has lost the elections and refuses to accept, Norton said it is quite the opposite. He said the government remains adamant that no political party should come to power based on electoral fraud. For InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. While works at the Guyana Water Incorporated have accelerated to maintain the distribution of potable water to all citizens, the water company has warned against persons tampering with its pipelines and meters. Kellon Rover tells us more. The unlawful habit of tampering with pipelines can cause immense health issues and the aim of the Guyana Water Incorporated is to ensure that every customer is satisfied with the quality and quantity of water supply. This was asserted by GWI's Georgetown Acting Regional Manager Ethan Pearson while appearing on MAD 97.5 FM on Wednesday. You have a lot of people that tamper with their network, they, they try to put in illegal okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I guess they don't want to pay, but what is cheap, we say, <laughs> very cheap. Um, as I used to tell some people in, in, in areas that we don't have meters, sometimes they used to pay $700 for water for a whole month, you understand? Mm -hmm. And people still go and put illegal connections mm -hmm. in the network. And this could contaminate the water also because if you know sometimes they could put these illegal connections, mm -hmm. but they don't have the requisite fit in to install these connections. Pearson emphasized the importance of persons communicating with GWI when they observe any breakage in pipelines, specifically by contractors in various areas where groundwork is ongoing. You know, people cleaning the drains on the canals mm -hmm. and they pull out the pipes, right? And nobody knows when these pipes are pulled out, you know. Some, some of them break the, these pipes and they don't report it to us. So we like everyone um if 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 they break the pipe let us just call in tell you that hey we break pipe and we'll go and fix it you know because this disrupt the service of the community and also it could contaminate the water so we want to get to these things as quickly as possible any main breakage we look to finish it uh, or we we um look to repair these main 
immediately. Georgetown Acting Revenue Manager Tamisha Dundas spoke of the challenges field workers are faced with while performing their daily duties. She explained that these issues can be remedied, but the cooperation of residents is essential in this effort. Um, some of the difficulties or challenges our field staff, I would say, our bill delivers and meter readers would face from time to time. One of the problems is animal attacks. Mm. Some of, all of my staff recently complained about a dog running her out of the property. I'm asking customers, I'm encouraging customers, you know that GWIB, every month we send our staff out to either <coughs> read your meter or deliver a bill. It's not like a surprise. It's been happening for years and years and years. Yes. So we want to encourage customers, if it is, you, you guys could secure your animals before allowing our staff to enter your property. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we get to read your meter. It eliminates you from receiving an SDBT. Dundas added that once a customer notices that a meter reader visited while they were not at home, they can proceed to take a picture of the meter and send the same to GWI's WhatsApp numbers 623-2995 or 620-1667 and the representative will respond. To make the process hassle-free for all customers, especially amidst COVID-19, customers can receive their messages electronically. Persons interested in utilizing the electronic service can visit www.gwiguyana.gy.com. For InfoHub, I am Kellon Rover. Public schools could possibly reopen from September. Utilizing an alternating system that would rotate students of the varying levels to avoid overcrowding in the schools. And though teachers have concerns about how the logistics will be worked out, many believe that reopening is needed as students are suffering. This is according to a report carried in the state-owned Guyana Chronicle. It was stated that the Ministry of Education's officials have begun meeting with some head teachers and teachers to get their opinion on the practicality of the proposed rotating arrangement aimed at having a lower number of learners at school at any one time. Notwithstanding Guyana's growing COVID-19 situation, the report noted that several teachers are voicing that they are ready to go back to school, given the lengthy period the schools have been closed. The article further stated that according to a source, the new school system would build on what was already implemented by the schools during the partial reopening of schools for primary school pupils to write the National Grade 6 assessment, and for secondary school students to write their CSEC and CAPE examinations. More news after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. As the countdown to Emancipation Day, August 1 begins, InfoHub will be featuring several news stories on the activities that led to the emancipation of enslaved Africans and other commemorative celebrations and monuments. Today, we feature some emancipation monuments. Let's take a look. Guyana annually celebrates its anniversary of the freedom of slavery on Emancipation Day, August 1st. This commemoration is a significant factor in our nation's history as it celebrates the freedom of our African people. Guyana possesses a number of emancipation monuments to remind the nation of our brave freedom fighters who have fought for our freedom for this country. One of these freedom fighters is represented through this bronze sculpture known as the 1763 Monument, which stands at 15 feet tall in the Square of Revolution. This historic monument was unveiled on May 23, 1976, to commemorate Guyana's 10th anniversary as an independent nation. Sculpted by the renowned Philip Moore and popularly known as the Coffee Monument, this momentous masterpiece honors the Berbice Slave Rebellion in 1763, a significant turning point in Guyana's struggle for freedom. Said rebellion was led by Coffee, who was of West African descent. 
Despite suffering defeat at the hands of the enslaving colonies, Kofi was named a national hero to Guyana and a symbol to fight against colonialism. A second freedom fighter is honored through the sculpture of the Damon Monument. This memorial is located in Anna Regina and was unveiled by the Regional Democratic Council of Region 2 on July 31, 1988. Damon protested against the 1834 apprenticeship system which required laborers to continue working on the plantations after the Emancipation Act was passed in 1833. Damon was executed on October 3, 1843 for his role in the protest. This miraculous bronze statue was built by the United States-based Guyanese sculptor Ivor Thom to honor one of Guyana's fallen heroes in the fight against slavery. Other freedom fighters are depicted through this statue known as the 1823 Emancipation Monument, which is situated along the Seawall Road opposite the Guyana Defense Forces Camp Ayangana headquarters. This monument was unveiled on August 5, 2013 by former President Donald Ramatar to pay tribute to the fallen heroes of the largest slave revolt known to our nation's history, the 1823 Damarara Revolt. With over 10,000 slaves involved, this historic moment has been reported to prompt the decision for emancipation. Our fourth monument brings us all the way to the east coast of Demerara. This sculpture is known as the Bedford Wharton Emancipation Monument, which was officially unveiled by the late former president, Hugh Desmond Hoyt, in memory of the 62 freed Africans who purchased the village in the year 1840 for the sum of $52,000. This structure depicts a hand with a broken chain clutching a book, which represents the registered title to the property in which the village was founded. With emancipation about a week away, it is important to be mindful and recognize the emancipation monuments which depict our freedom fighters who have fought bravely for the country we live in today. Coming to you from the east coast of Demerara with videographer Akeem Thomas, I'm Gavin Lewis for InfoHub. Remember to do your part to ensure you do not put yourself at risk during this time. If you have a cough, fever, and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early, but call the hotline first. That's all for today. Connect with us on all our social media platforms, including WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, as we bring you the latest and important news related to COVID-19 and more. Also, subscribe to our website, dpi.gov.gy. Your Bridge Report is up next. Goodbye for now.